go ahead and ask. All right, back with you. Got uh, 10 minutes till the top of the hour. Still got another break to get in. So, uh, Congressman Tim Griffin with us till 3 o'clock. Let me throw it over to Glenn first, uh, Curtis, if that's yeah. all right. Sure. He's got a question for the Congressman. Well, Congressman, first, welcome back to Arkansas. It's good to see you again. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm just curious. What What are your thoughts on this uh, on this conflict? It seems that we have going on in Lib- Libya. I just for, for for some reason, I'm very confounded about how this all took place and and um, just give us your thoughts. Well, I think that what first comes to mind is the War Powers Resolution, uh, which, which requires consultation with uh, the Congress. And if, if my mem- memory serves me, the last president before taking action uh, in Afghanistan post-9-11 and taking action uh, in, in Iraq uh, went to the Congress uh, and consulted and got resolutions passed authorizing the use of force. Um, you know, I, I think that we need a lot more details on what what's the end game, uh, why now. Um, you know, I, I'm supportive of the commander in chief as a as a general principle, but I think if you look at uh, at the level of consultation here. It, it doesn't it doesn't pass muster, and I think that this the uh, the goals that the president has laid out aren't real clear to me, uh, and I think that we just need to we need if we're going to do this type of thing, we need to go as a country together. And when you've got folks from Dennis Kucinich to Senator Cornyn to John Conyers to uh, Senator Webb. I mean, we, it, the, the entire spectrum. I, I think that um, I think it tells you that we need a lot more information, and and Congress needs to play a role. Well, that's my biggest concern. My biggest concern is number one: why are we there? What are we doing because we are there, and how are we going to get out? You yeah, know, we're what's already the end game. Yeah, we're we're already running two wars right now, and now it looks like we're heavily invested in what could potentially become a third. And then on top of it, I, I, I'm hearing in, in in the blogosphere now that the, that the word is out that he's more interested in regime change, and it's sort of like you know the bait and switch. We're going to go there to make sure he's not killing off his people, and he's not you know, uh, ca- causing, you know, genocide and these things. And all of a sudden now we're looking like perhaps we're going in there and trying to actually take out uh, uh, Gaddafi. Gaddafi. Well, and, and the question is, too, is what changed? Um, you know, this has been going on for some time. And then you hear the, the British are the ones to first talk about the no-fly zone, and then the French, um, and then... All of a sudden, we're doing this. I, it just it just doesn't sit right, and I think it I think it's probably uh, I think there's a lot more information that we need that we don't have. Um, and again, we have this is not new territory. We have a precedent for how this is supposed to flow. Um, and when it doesn't flow that way, uh, there are people people um, question it, and that's what's happening. Okay. Curtis? Congressman, I'd like to take you back to the budget, if I may. I I was listening, and I was especially interested in your distinguishing the debate over the CRs versus the uh, the next year's budget. I think think conservatives may be as concerned about what is being cut as the magnitude of, of, of the cuts. And you made an excellent the point last time we were here, we are talking about if you cut across the board, you keep things you don't want to keep and hurt things you don't want to hurt. But I, I, I'm guessing that the Senate is having as much heartburn over what was cut as they are the magnitude of the cuts. Is, is that an accurate assessment? I, I, you mean the, the, the Senate as a whole or the, or the uh, well, Republicans at least, in the... Well, let's just say the people who are not voting for the, the H.R. 1. Yeah, well... Yes, uh, a lot of the people in the Senate who are opposing our HR one are are opposing it. Uh, at least this is what they indicate: is they're opposing it on substantive grounds, what is being cut, as well as uh, 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 quantitative grounds, how much is being cut. So they've got various, you know, numerous reasons to to oppose it. I guess um, the problem is. 
I haven't heard an alternative from anybody as to what it is we can cut and where it is we should trim. And um, so I think that uh, a lot of us are just saying, hey, we'd love to hear your uh, alternative vision of what we need to do to get our our um, our books in balance, but I really haven't heard that. All I hear is what we can't do in terms of uh, getting the spending under control. Um, I would say this though, and and I think I think sometimes we do a poor job at this as we get so caught up in the numbers, we don't tell people why it's important. And I'm trying to remind myself to do that. Um, it is it is important from a real life everyday perspective that 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 mean you know that sort of brings it home to folks uh, going to work every day and all because if we don't deal with the debt we're going to have uh, a situation where unemployment goes far beyond where it is now we will have we will not have we will not be the country of innovation we will not be the country of technological advancement we will not be the country of dreams and opportunity we will not be the country that i grew up in and that you grew up in we will be a different country and it's not a country that we're accustomed to living in we have i get back to american exceptionalism we have done more in a relatively short time frame than any other country ever. And uh, we have incredibly um, innovative, creative people. And our system has allowed those people to flourish and do great things. And if we do not address the debt, it will be we will not have job creation. We will not have the standard of living, the quality of life, et cetera, that we're used to. All right. Congressman Tim Griffin, thanks so much. Our half hour has gone flying by. We'll get you back the next time. Let's do a full hour. What do you say? I can call or whatever. Okay, we'll do it that way. All right, we've got to get a break in from the Capitol to Dave Ellswick Show.